Welcome into Gaming with Derek. Derek Forrest here and uh, bringing on a couple of CrossFit coaches, uh, notable CrossFit coaches. You guys know who both of them are. We've got Nick Simpson and James Townsend joining me. Nick Simpson, uh, now known as the coach of Olivia Sulik, who's making a name for herself and a rise and obviously has done well at the teen level. And then, of course, James Townsend most recently took uh, Mal O'Brien or helped take Mal O'Brien to the games where uh, she finished in the top 10. Guys, thanks for joining me. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, glad to be here. Doing good. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're going to we're going to talk a bunch of different things. But like the name says, Gaming with Derek, we are going to play some games as we go along. I actually have to pull one up right now. Totally forgot to do it. But uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. But uh, first, I just want to kind of get an introduction with you guys. You know, James, Nick, I kind of want to know uh, where you guys first met and where that relationship started between the two of you guys. If James, you want to start first. Um, I had met Nick um, out at uh, 2018 at the CrossFit Games. Uh, he, had, he was coaching Olivia, and I was coaching a teen athlete at the time named Matty Espinosa. And then, you know, we kind of just uh, hit it off right there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, same thing. I remember the first time we kind of met uh, that way, and then we kind of reconnected again at the Pit Fitness Ranch. And um, yeah, I mean, each time we are kind of get a chance to network and talk, we do. And then we've kind of just built on that relationship from there. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I appreciate having you guys on. We want to talk a little bit of coaching and what it's been like for you guys as, as uh, coaches for some of the top teams and some comparisons, differences between the two. But you know, first I want to start with James since uh, you know, we saw this uh this emergence from from Mal last year. Um uh, from the Granite Games all the way up to the games and and obviously what she's been able to do uh during the off season, but but what what was that like last year that whole experience being able to to have that experience with her? Um the experience is man, it was it, it was surreal, you know, um just being in the gym with her from uh six, eight hours a day, uh, Monday through Wednesday, and then Friday and Saturday to be able to really dial in on her movements. You know, I'm all about um, being efficient in your movement to to be uh, less efficient so you can have more energy and then also empower yourself and have more motivation to go ahead and uh, be your best on the workout. So um, to be able to dial in with her through those hours and then see it flourish on a competition floor it was just for, it was just so surreal and uh thankful for the opportunity to to uh, help her get there and and also be a coach on that level yeah not not just with mal but with like all your athletes as you're preparing them for whatever level it is whether it's the open or uh you know just training and getting better or the games at at every level what's kind of your consistent theme that you always want to get through to your athletes Mindset, mindset, um, just, just basically, you know, just telling my athletes that, hey, look, you could train uh, your physicality all day. You could train your body all day. But if you're not training your mental, if you're not training your mental capacity, if you're not in there getting the, the mental education out of your workouts and what you're trying to uh, improve on, then, then, you know, you're basically, you're doing all the physical work for, for no reason. But if you're in there training hard for your, um, training your body hard to, so, so you can go ahead and be the best that you can be on a competition floor. And you're also training your mental side, sky's the limit for you, you know? So, so if I can empower you to, uh, be the best version of yourself mentally, to be able to go to that pain cave, to be able to, uh, appreciate that pain cave, um, to, to not be afraid of that pain cave, then then you you have a bright future in this sport or or anything that you do in life. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that mental is such a, a big thing <laughs> in, in anything you do, whether it's athletics or you know career wise anything. So to, to lock right. that up, super important. Uh, right. Nick, Nick, for you, you know, uh, kind of the same question for Olivia and and all your other athletes that uh, that you deal with. Kind of, what's the one thing that you kind of preach as you're looking to get your athletes better? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely something James and I kind of have in common. It's just like I found 
that if you can get that mentality right and you can make sure in between your ears, you're kind of winning those battles, you know, the physical part, uh, I wouldn't say that it's easier physically, but you can just maximize it. So just there's training days that can go good physically, but I mean, if you don't have the right takeaways, you know what I'm saying? It's not, you're not going to maximize it and you're going to have a lot of bad days too. So all mentality. And um, I like being there with my athletes. Cause I feel like if I'm just going to put a program on a sheet that has one level of effectiveness, but I feel like if I'm able to talk to my athletes and be there with my athletes. And I, I think James agrees with this, you know, right. I can see how they're feeling, how they're looking and I can just be there. I can either be there for them, you know, whatever the context is, I can be there for them. I can cheer them on. I can talk to them, you know, through whatever they're going through. And that's the part that I enjoy. So um, I would say mentality is the first one that I would look at. And then physical second. Yeah. Why, why I kind of want to dig into the heart of this before we get into our first game, but why do you think when it comes to CrossFit, the mental part is so important? Either one of you can take that. I'll, t I'll, I'll go first. I, I think yeah. <clears throat> CrossFit's, you know, a crazy sport that you, you train 99.999% of the year. I mean, even if you do all the big competitions, you know, you're spending 99% of your time training and not many other sports are like that. You know, with football, it's still a lot of training. With basketball, I mean, it's it might even be more playing than it is practicing, really. And just when you only get a chance to compete in these small windows and it's all training and it's always about getting better, you know, mentally that that's challenging. You know, right. that, that's a, that's a, that's an uphill battle. It, it, it feels like. Right. And I think, you know, with, uh, with CrossFit being such a physical sport, you know, every male and female feel as if like they're the strongest in the gym. Right. But when you got to add in, conditioning and and you know metabolic conditioning and right. gymnastics conditioning and everything for for a uh, uh, a time frame for a certain amount of speed you know that puts a whole different aspect to to the training right you're not just doing curls for the girls or you know leg day or whatever you're, you're doing a total body workout right and it, it takes you to a different place mentally that you've never been before or it takes you back to that, that that mental place that you might have been to while you were playing sports or something. But even while you were playing sports, you probably didn't have that mental capacity to be able to push. But CrossFit is is something that that uh, attacks that mental side to where it either makes you stronger or it makes you weaker. And it definitely humbles you. All right, so our first game on deck for the day, we're going to play Wordle. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's a new thing uh that that everybody around the country has been doing and basically what it is is you have six chances to guess a five letter word and basically what happens is if you guess a letter it'll show up either green or yellow if it's in the correct spot within the word so if it starts with an a and you guess a and it's correct it'll be green and that'll be the first letter if it's not the first letter it'll show up yellow and it's somewhere else within the word so uh you guys ready to knock this out Let's do it. Yes. All right. <laughs> I am going to start with the first word. And let's see. Oh, let's do audit for the first word because it gives you <clears throat> three vowels. And it is none of those letters. <laughs> it is none of those. So we have nothing to work with right now. And a <laughs> and A U D I T is out. So none of those letters are in the word. Let's go. Right. Uh, let's go broke. Broke. All right. We got three letters. The R is where it's, it's supposed to be. And the K and E need to be in different positions. So we have three letters. <clears throat> hmm. hmm. I don't know, guys. I'm just going to start typing in and see what comes to me. You got the E-R. I would say I. No, no, not I. Nick is just silent. Just nothing. Stumped. Man. <laughs> Stunned. <laughs> the, K, the, the K is what's throwing me off. The 
K to E. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can guess another word to eliminate other stuff, I guess. We, we can guess another word to eliminate if we need to. So there's no O and there's no U and there's no I. Dr drink? No, there's no I. Nope. And, and there's no E. There's no E in drink and there's an E in the word. There's no U either. There also is no U. Huh. <sighs> Okay, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh no, B's not there. But I'm gonna do it just to eliminate a word, or just to get more information. That's a name. I put break. I want to oh. see if there's an E, and maybe the K and the E have switched. That's a good one. Boom. All right. Mm. Break. Oh no, you just put. I was about to say break. I mean, you literally just put that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. So the R and the E and the K are, are where they need to be now. Ah oh, man. C R E. Ooh. C R E. Creek. Creek? Um, that's where I'm going with what you just said. Boom. Yep. Yes. Boom. Let's that go. Is. There we go. I just needed that that little. The CRE, that was enough for me. Thank you, James. Yeah. Yeah. We make a great team. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Nick, get those you, were, you were stunned the entire time. Just stun love. Right. <laughs> when you when you started out with audit and it got zero responses, I was like, wow. <laughs> wow right? Yeah. Yeah. I wanna talk about the heart of, of why we're here and and it it's the irony of the fact that we're all three black African Americans currently talking to each other about CrossFit. Like it's nothing new that uh CrossFit kind of lacks diversity in the United States, I would say. It doesn't lack diversity, right? It's super diverse in every country, you know, um but it's a little bit harder in the in the US for people in the inner city, whether they're black, white, whatever race they are. Uh, whatever ethnic ethnicity they are uh, to get into CrossFit, and the majority, and and part of that is, in my experience, right? I got into CrossFit about seven years ago. I've been a garage CrossFitter from day one, um, but part of it was when I started seven years ago. CrossFit was a little expensive to get into, um, so I took the route of I'm going to slowly build a gym and slowly get equipment, and at some point it'll pay off. And it would end up being cheaper than paying a, a box subscription or, or a membership or, or whatever. Um, so, I mean, that's a small piece of it. But as we look at CrossFit as a whole and diversity as a whole and getting people from inner cities more involved in the CrossFit and, and things like that, what are some of the steps that, that need to be taken? Or, and what are some of the steps that you guys are starting to take? Um, I know... You know, James, you're you're right down the road from Elijah Muhammad, who's doing a really good job with that and things like that. But but where do where does CrossFit need to go uh, moving forward when we start to discuss diversity in CrossFit and bringing like the inner city in? I, I think James should. Pro I mean, I think James should go first because I I consider James and, and Elijah kind of like pioneers. Um, at least even they you know they even were for me so. James, I think you should kind of take, maybe start with that, um, and then maybe I'll piggyback off you because, um, you know, um, same as you, Derek. I started seven years ago, and uh, you know, I, I came right out of the um, the NFL. To... For, for for the record, for someone who started seven years ago, you were at a higher level, way higher level than I <laughs> than I'll ever be. <laughs> no, it, I mean it was it's it's for me it was more so just just all for my. Uh, my God-given talent, my natural ability. Um, that's how I, I got into it. And like I was saying, you know, I was coming off of um, being out in the NFL and then I got into training UFC fighters in boxing. But then I also got back into uh, working on my fitness. And so I started doing what I was doing for, you know, for the NFL and then for college until somebody showed me 13.5 and was like, hey, you know, you, you, should, you should do this because you're doing their, the kind of workouts. Then, uh, you know, 13.5 was the chest-to-bar um, thruster workout that, that you had to do in 
you had to do three rounds of it, of 15-15 mm. in three rounds. And it was Khalifa, Froning, Camille, and Sam Briggs. So I was like, oh, wow, man, this is dope. Like, you know, let me go check it out. So went out to Dogtown CrossFit and, you know, instead of them, um, like my journey into it was a bit different because people, they, 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 they saw my stature. They, 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 they heard, they, they got an idea of my background and then they saw my abilities. And instead of me being led into the beginner approach, it was all, it was, I came into like, oh man, he already got it. He could power clean 315 already and, you know, snatch 235 already, you know, power snatch and do all the jump high and everything. Oh, you're you're set. All right, hop in these workouts with, you know, these CrossFit Games athlete who was, you know, Sam Briggs, Lindsey Valenzuela, Kenny Leverage, and all of them. And and I was like, oh, okay, you know, you know, I could do this. But that's why I said that. Like, yeah, just because I could do it doesn't mean you know I have the other attributes that go along with it. The mental, you know, the learning how to pace and learn how to move correctly and this and that. So, you know, I just. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, my, my journey is just a bit a bit different into it. I, to me, when I look back on it, it was, it's just people get stuck with the abilities that, you know, we can do as athletes, as as Black men and, and women that we could, you know, do naturally instead of taking that approach of, of hey, you know, here's a guy who can do the stuff, but it's more to it, to the sport of CrossFit, to where he has to learn the the ins and out of it the how to move correctly with with the the skill movements how to roll better you know how to not make everything about his upper body because he got big biceps and he's strong and using his upper body how to move fluently you know how to move the barbell fluently you know how to work on your mobility and everything like just taking that approach and um from my experience i feel as if that you know there's not we're kind of pushed to the back on that. You know, there's there, there's no care into it and into um, really dialing in and, and helping a person of color, you know, attack the sport properly in that way. You know, that's that's, that's just coming from my experience. I, I, I agree with you because mine was pretty similar. I was already <clears throat> in shape. I was training people and I kind of started CrossFit with a, you know, a good starting point. I was, I had already been division one basketball player. I was athletic and I was in a gym all day. And I almost feel like that's, <clears throat> it's almost like a, an underlying responsibility that I feel to be able to, if an athlete at the younger, if an African-American at a younger age, or honestly, anybody that's got lower opportunity at a younger age wants to get started. I want to be able to help or encourage or support. Um, although their journey is different than me, I feel like for the, for that to, develop in the sport mm -hmm. it has to start with youth you know what i'm saying because there's going to be more athletes like me and i and i don't i know there's other athletes that are like that like they were already college athletes and they could just transition right into crossfit but as far as the teen side which is what i spent most of my time watching you know i don't it's not flooded with african-american athletes matter of fact i don't think i've seen one in the games you guys can i might i might be missing one or two but it's not many and so opportunity definitely seems like it's less but I really don't know what CrossFit can do about that. I think it really starts with one athletes wanting to do it. And then two people like James and people like easy and people, hopefully that people like myself can, can either be examples for them, or if we can have direct contact with them, just reaching out our hand and helping them just understanding that we understand that the, the journey and challenges that they're going to have. Right. Right. So where do you think it starts for uh, giving the, those kids a, a better opportunity? Um, like I said, obviously we've we've seen that uh, with what Easy is doing. Um, you know, CrossFit's kind of moved towards that direction over the last year or so with uh, having some inner city programs and things like that. But what's really what's really the first step? You know it. To, to me it's not really the inner city to me um you know there's there's there was this page on uh on instagram you know and, and i don't want to you know 
get their name or whatever, but I'm pretty sure y'all 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 seen it and came across it. There was this page to where it allowed people of color to go ahead and anonymously give their experience at a CrossFit box. You know, and a lot of them gave their experience of um, being at a CrossFit box, of of not being welcome and, and not being trained in that in, in that way to where they can develop a face or a presence in the sport, you know? And, and it's not necessarily just the, just, you know, the athletes coming from the inner city. There's people coming into, there's people of color that, that are coming into CrossFit gyms in the suburban areas and rural areas, but it's just, it's, they're not getting the right opportunity to be able to have a presence, you know, whether if it's in their box or, or, or being introduced into the competitive world. It's just, you know, looking at their experience and reading their experience, it's like, you know, they get, they get shunned out and they get pushed away. And then that drives them away from not even wanting to do the sport or be a part of the sport. So I think, I think that's a, that's a big thing that we have to look into and, and not just think that, you know, we already know it's, it's barely in the inner city. Inner city kids want to play ball or catch a football, you know, and some of them might want to play baseball, <laughs> you know, some of them might want to play baseball, but, you know, there are people of color that come into CrossFit gyms outside of the inner cities and it's just, they're not being, they're not given the it's right not, opportunity to be able to flourish in, a, in, in this sport. There's some disconnect where it just, it doesn't stick. Right. Um, and I totally right. agree with what James said. I, I feel like you can start with with going at the inner city and there's obviously having success there will be awesome. But I think there's an element to athletes want to be I mean, people want to be like who they see. So it's like when if I'm a young African-American, I'm a teenager and I look on I see the NFL and I see, you know, people that look like me. When I turn on the CrossFit games, I don't see that. So it's not like I'm getting frustrated as a youth. I just don't see it. I mean, I just, that's one right. of the reasons I wasn't right. super attached to hockey. I mean, my cousins um, played hockey. I'm mixed and my cousins are, are are Caucasian. They're white and they get to see people that look like them and, and stuff like that. And I don't see that. I saw that in the basketball world, in the football world. And those are the sports that I gravitated to. And um, I think in the cross in the CrossFit world, again, inner city or suburban or adult or not, they're going to want to see people that look like them. Right. You know, and that's a big part of feeling welcome. So like there, there's a disconnect because pe African-Americans, when they learn that CrossFit's good for them, it's popular for them to want to try it. Right. What's not popular is for it to stick and for it to be something that they kind of embody. Like this is for me. It almost feels like when I talk to um, uh, my wife's family, you know, my family, just like when I'm talking to them, it doesn't feel like they feel like it's for them. And on my side of things, I try to encourage them that it is, but you know, I'm one voice. And so I feel like the way for that to get more momentum is for me to, I mean, and simply to be like, hey, look, look at James, look at Derek and look at Easy and look at these different guys. But, you know, it's got to be more like that at their local box. And this is both for someone wanting to be an athlete or for someone just to lose 50, or 50 to 100 pounds or just right. to move because they want to feel good. Right, right. And I think that the gyms that do have good representation in the diversity, they're seeing those things. You know, they're not feeling like they're the only ones. Not, you can get anomalies where someone comes in and they're going to kind of be a pioneer of their gym and be like the first person of color or whatever. But generally speaking, that, that has a long way to go. Right. It right. seems like. Right. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it, it kind of comes off the uh, catch 22 isn't necessarily the phrase, but, uh, but <laughs> It's hard. Basically, what we're coming down to is it's hard to get a lot of representation because you don't see a lot of representation currently in the sport. So how do you then in turn? So then how do you get in? How do you in turn get people interested in the sport without that representation? And and that's kind of like the circle that we're going to continue to do until um, there's a breakthrough. And I don't. If this is this you know, is like. I think then this is like heavy pressure. That's like saying, okay, we need Chandler Smith to win, to like stand on the podium. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, I think, I think it, uh, it falls back on us. Right. So, so, so I got with a, a group of guys who, who are passionate about the sport, 
you know, we all we we all connected through Instagram. And it was during the time of, of COVID and everything. Never met each other and whatnot, but you know, they we we followed each other and 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 a group and a group chat was created, right? And um we just, you know, we we, we formed this bond, group of you know, African American men. We formed this bond. And then we were like, yo, let's, let's, let's meet up and let's get together and, you know, let's train or whatever. I happen to be blessed to be an owner of my own business. So I was like, all right, you know, why don't y'all, you know, come on out, you know, let's, let's fellowship, let's, let's train, you know, let's, let's talk junk, let's see who can lift the heaviest or whatever. This and that. We got together, but then it ended up becoming a camp, right? Because they, they, one, they respect my faith, two, they see my vision on how I feel as if that not enough um, correct information is out there to help athletes approach the game of, of, of being a, a, a good everyday gym, um, gym athlete or how to go about being a good competitor the right way, right? How to how you know um, how to train right? You know what what programming should they be using? Um, should be doing uh, how to move right? Uh, technique and everything you know just, just just dialing into the whole aspect of training right? So that's where the TBO training camp formed because us black men we we want to be included into the sport. You know, we want to we we want to have a voice into the sport. We want to have a face into the sport. So, me being able to 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 share this this vibe, this 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 gathering on social media through through my following, through volume two, and then we just have volume three to where people see the vibe and they 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 see the connection, and then they hearing from the word of mouth of those that are coming into the gym and being a part of the campus, like yo. Their vibe, their 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 information, their training, their their knowledge is is right. What I need to either be an athlete or to go about being an everyday gym gym athlete the right way. And these are men who are men of color that are getting together, putting their egos aside, right? Coming together, forming this bond, and 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 embracing and bringing on other people of color that want to be a part of that, that, you know, that community, that, that, that bond, that vibe. And that's, man, that's just, that's just a blessing because I get a lot of messages from people that look like, you know, us three, that's like, yo, how can I be a part of that? Like, like, I want to, I want to be able to learn and, and not just learn also because of your name, but to be a part of that, that vibe too, to be a part of that group too. And, and and to to feel those vibes and and to feel that energy and and be able to 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 have the the empowerment to know that you know what I belong in the sport too because here are these men that are getting together that are showing their face and they're putting their face on the forefront to try to be a face in the sport. I want to be a part of that as well. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because even even last year, obviously last year was my first open announcement um, with the with the media team. But immediately, uh, even on my end, I got a ton of messages. Um, you know, people of uh, different ethnicities and different countries and things like that, saying, "Hey, it was nice to see you know someone that looks like me out there right. in front of the camera talking CrossFit and things like that." And you know, it's something that, like, from a day to day standpoint, it's not something that, like, I'm constantly thinking about. But, like, when I get messages like that, I'm always reminded of, like, yeah, it's definitely bigger than just like anything that I'm doing. It's taking steps forward and, and, you know, getting the, the sport of CrossFit out there to, to everyone. And, um, you know, that's super important. And it's super important to have like people like you guys, um, even as coaches, I'm sure, you know, there's a different, feel or a vibe that you guys probably get from athletes who are interested to get, to get into the sport because you guys are coaching them as well. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the coaching side is, I'm pretty sure Nick could, could uh, chime in on this too. The coaching side is, 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 are we the only two coaches that ever 
been at the games with athletes, whether if it's teen or individual, as black men. What uh, what about L with Brute? Who's that? Coach L, I'm not sure. I think he said, I'm not sure. He he might be. He he was with Brute Strength. I, I'm not sure his last name, but it, he he's. I just met him this last year. His name's L. He had. A he coaches. Team. He coaches Zach Watts. He coaches Zach Watts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's he's, he's, he's through Brute Strength. Yeah. The three, right. You know, it's that's there. I feel as if you know us being African American men in a, a predominantly white dominated sport that like. You know, we we have to go the extra mile with our athletes to to even be recognized as a you know a, a good coach in the sport. You know, um, we have to, we have to you know not not just bank on ourselves, but also bank on the the performance of our athletes to to be able to get our name out there because it, it, it's tough, man. I mean, it's it's really tough to to have. Um, the trust from other athletes to be able to come to us and say, hey, you know, can you coach me to get me to this level? And it's tough. Yeah, I, to I totally agree with that. It does seem like maybe you have to kind of, you have to really excel expectations to kind of, to kind of get noticed. Uh, at least that's how, that, at least that's how I felt. Obviously in this sport, everyone would probably say they don't get enough attention or recognition. But I would right. just say from my perspective, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think I was really ever considered a good coach until Olivia had a complete career. I mean, maybe three straight years of being a top level games. I think, I mean, we straight up won the games and, you know, I don't, I feel like it could be handled different in a way to encourage more people to think that they, this is something they want to do or be a part of basically. Right. Right. M more or less. So, but yeah. And you know what? And, and we didn't say easy, obviously. Yeah, and he's, yeah, he coached, yeah. coached Matt when she was 14 or whatever, yep, right? Yeah, so. yep, you're right, you're right, yep. Yeah. Yep. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And I expect you guys to have some really good knowledge because you should have been able to retain it because you guys coach teen athletes, so. I don't know, some of these, some of these teens don't even know how to write in cursive. So <laughs> I don't oh, know facts. if we learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the categories uh, that you may not see on your screen, first grade physical education and second grade animal science. I need to, I need to start at first grade. I need first grade physical education. That's my, that's yeah. my best chance to talk here. First grade social studies. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stay humble with these games. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go with the first category, and I'm going to go with first grade physical education. Well, we'll see if you're smarter than a first grader. Baseball, basketball, football, and soccer are all examples of what kind of sport? Oh, this is this is easy. You got extreme water, it, but it's team. It's definitely team. Mm. It's easy. Mm. It better be easy. You got to go with team. You can't go with anything else, right? Team. We're building confidence. You must have learned something <laughs> in school because that's the right answer. Hey, there, you hey, you would not be a good coach talking like that, man. You need to boost me right now. <laughs> so, so we're. And yes, so we're going to stick with uh, first grade. We're going to go first grade social studies here. Let's go. Come on, George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> what coin is not made of nickel and copper? Huh. This is. That's a trick <laughs> question. I feel like I feel like it is the nickel. Yeah. Uh, That's not made out of. Nickel. You think it's the nickel? I, I don't. Bet your favorite subject was. <laughs> uh, hey, I, this is not first grade. I I think this could be a trick question, right? So forget, you still let's have think of it this way, left. James. I have no idea. Man, it says which coin is not made of nickel, nickel and copper. The you can't penny is not made of nickel, right? Just copper. So that's the trick question. That's got to be it, right? That is the trick. Yeah. So is that what we're thinking? Mm -hmm. The penny? Mm -hmm. It's not made of copper. How much longer do you think or nickel, excuse pay? me. I'm, I'm so disappointed in myself. Let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with it. All right. Penny, we're going to lock it in. You are not the fastest horse on the Oh, track, we got it right. But at least we got it right. We got it right. right. We got it right. 
That was funny. <laughs> Your classmates can only All right, we got to pick a student here, time, so pick and then uh, we'll move on to our next question. Don't be picking Logan on there. Logan looks like he's smart. So, what do we want to? What, <laughs> what do we want to? So, what do we want to go with? Third grade math. Third grade math. All right, here hey, we go. Third grade question, huh? Well, let's see what it is. A decagon has how many sides? Oh, this is easy right off the bat. You got to go. Nick, you're all over it. You got to go. You're right. You got to go with 10. Let's go. You got to go with 10. It's easy. Lock it in. It's amazing how useful some of the stuff you learned in school turns out to be. All right. So we got that one. Yeah, that that, that was an easy one. Good job. Good job with that one. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's pick a I appreciate that. All right. What do we got next? What do we want next for our next topic? No, that was me. I did that. All right, let's just All let's right. just get right to it. Now I'm feeling good. Let's go fifth grade health. All right, fifth grade health. I'm hoping that you guys get this because uh, you guys are both CrossFit coaches. Yeah, so let's you guys just should do it. Let's see where we're at. All right, so what is the under layer of skin called? All right, I think I know. What's the I think answer? I know what this is. Yeah, what are the answers? Yeah, I I have to pronounce these correctly. <laughs> we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got epidermis, dermis, sebaceous, this and subcutaneous, you know. sub I think. I'm picking that one because it can't even what? <laughs> <laughs> you still have all your oh, man. I, subcutaneous, I think. That definitely What's your guess it. there? <laughs> My guess is I think it's the epidermis. I think it's, uh, I think it's dermis, though. You think it's dermis? Yeah. I think it's the epidermis. Ah. Is it the epidermis, Nick? What do you think? I think it's epidermis. All right. Now I'm you're changing it epidermis. to epidermis. Don't be so, too hard on yourself. So you're changing it from dermis <laughs> to epidermis now. Partially. No, All right, no, I, think it's Mike, I think his mic just messed up. He said epidermis. That was the wrong answer. Oh, it's the it's the wrong answer. It better not be subject sub sub whatever that is. Oh, dermis. Oh, it's dermis. I told you, you that right originally. Help you out with questions you can't answer in the game, not in real life. Dermis, yeah. Oh my gosh, dermis. All right, all right. We got to pick a student here again. All right, so I'm gonna go with third grade U.S. geography. Got it. Here is our third grade question. All right. What state's nickname is the Golden State? That's easy. Come on. That's California. easy. Let's go. I'm California. Not. Yeah, that's easy. It's easy. <laughs> it's called really Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. That's exactly how no you know. What happens from this point on, the worst you can do is. All right. We're on a roll here. We're on a roll here. We're cruising. Wow. What if we clear the board, though? Well, we could clear the board. We're getting there. Uh, we got to go with another subject, though. What do we got? What Let's go uh, fourth fourth grade music. Did I say music? Fourth grade music. Yeah, that's music. Here is our fourth mm. grade question. All right. What is the following note? Oh, I know, I know this one. I know this one off the bat. What do we think, guys? Any. What are the two? What are the two things at the bottom? One of the uh, options at the bottom. I, oh, I see sorry. B and A. Uh, B A G and this F. This question is normally answered by nine-year-olds. <clears throat> is it G? Uh. uh what do you no think? Idea. Don't forget, you still have all your cheats left. Is it G? It is. It is definitely G. A. G, good answer. It good answer. It is definitely. If you drop out. <laughs> so, what is the following note? B, A, G, or F? I'm waiting for some clarification. I, I knew it wasn't A or B. I think it's F. It's definitely F because I remember face. Face. Yes. Yeah. yeah. F A C E. And then I remember that for treble clef was F A C E. And then for bass clef, yeah. It was all cars eat gas, A C E G. Uh, that's how I remember my notes growing up. You did note cards in school. Well, that took a while, but you, <laughs> you remember, right? you remember right? face. <laughs> oh. 
All right, nice job. Let's keep it rolling. It's All right, yeah. Trying to run the board here. Help you out when the questions get too hard. All right, so we've got we'll pick a student real quick, pick and we're gonna pick another category. What are you guys thinking? No, I think I think it's me. Let's do no, fifth no, grade. I'll pick, I'll pick All right, Nick, what do you got? Let's, let's do a U.S. history. Fifth Just, grade U.S. history. For one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All right. Who immediately followed Abraham Lincoln as president of the United States? It is definitely the 17th president of the United States. That one I know for sure because Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president. What's so, the names? Read them off. Oh, sorry. So we've got Millard Fillmore, James Polk, Andrew Johnson, and Zachary Taylor. Louisiana purchase. That's it's what definitely I between Jesus. Andrew Johnson and James Polk, I believe. I want to... Don't forget, you still have all your cheats left. You say you're pretty certain it is Andrew I'm, Johnson. Uh, I'm. I, it's either yeah, between yeah, Andrew that, Johnson that, and that James Polk. That was going to be my um Polk. Fifty thousand dollars. That was going to be my guy. I, uh, so Nick, what are you what are you thinking on this one? You got to You got to guess. Hmm. I think I'm going to go Andrew Johnson too. I think Andrew Johnson is is Andrew the guy. So we're gonna lock it in consensus. I know, Cynth I know Cynthia's about to get us. We're wrong, aren't we? <laughs> no, no, we got it right. Oh, we yes. Got it right. Oh, wow. Nice. All right, so we got wow. it right. But yeah, I don't know if this... Nice. I, don't, I honestly don't know if this is making us look good or if this is making us really is look bad so at this point. Time, but not too much time. Guaranteed bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do we got next? What are we going right, to go with? Let's go second grade measurements. Can we see the question, please? Right. I hope so. Water freezes at what temperature Celsius? 32, 145, or zero? This is easy. We're going to go lock it in with zero. Zero. For sure. Zero. Locked in at zero. Easy one. Let's lock it in. That I didn't get that right. Is... Hey, Sam Briggs literally just taught me that last week. <laughs> <laughs> no shot. I swear last no week she said that. No I was like, shot. Makes sense. You're down to your last That's class so funny. Break. Pick another subject. All right. All right, let's go. Let's go second grade. Let's, let's go se second grade. Second grade, second grade animal All science. Right, All right, let's go. For $300,000. True or false, the following animal is warm-blooded, and we have a alligator. True or false, warm-blooded, and that is false. false. He is That's a cold-blooded animal right there, the alligator. Let's lock it in. You got yep. that one right. All right, we're trying to run the board here. Yes, we are. Let's pick a subject. All right, so we got our final category to run the table, fourth grade social For studies. $500,000, here is the question. <laughs> question is, which branch of government meets in the following landmark? It's regulatory, I can tell you right now, that that is not uh, a branch of government. <laughs> Legislative, executive, and judiciary. I'm not. Hmm. What, what are we thinking, guys, on this one? I don't know if this makes you feel any better. What do you guys, that you, is that judici judiciary? I honestly don't know. Don't forget, Might be legislative. Still have all your I don't know. Uh, What's that little comment I saw that said I got my cheats left? <laughs> I might have to use them. What's that so you got oh. the cheats left? Oh, you got a phone a friend or something? Does that mean I can cheat off Logan on there? I'm... Yeah, it's judiciary. Uh, we're thinking judiciary. Uh, I'm not exactly judiciary. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's executive. Watch it be, watch it be executive. But we're gonna lock it in judiciary because that was the consensus. I don't know what took you so long to come uh, we, up with that answer. We got it wrong. That it's wrong. Legislative, wow. the one we didn't pick. Here. That was one of my three guesses. <laughs> The one we Goodbye, didn't pick, of course. We'll we almost ran the table. Time. Almost ran the table. Almost, almost. We got close. We we got the one game right. Yep. Hey. Yep. Hey. We made ourselves look look bad for content. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final 
But finally, as we as we wrap this one up, <laughs> um, I, I just want to talk about something else that that you guys have in common, and obviously, um, both of you have kids, and um, you know, we've talked we've talked uh, earlier about um, having representation and and things like that, and it, th this is one way of, of having representation is having your kids kind of look up to you guys and and see what you guys are doing, whether it's coaching, whether it's being a father, being a parent, um, and, and obviously working out in the gym. And you guys have gotten to experience that and kind of start helping your kids um, learn the sport of CrossFit and the movement of CrossFit and the, the, you know, the, the exercise science behind CrossFit. And, you know, James, uh, just want to start with you. What, is, what has that been like? Oh, man, it's been a blessing, man, to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, spending time um, with my kids, you know, not having a male dominant figure in my life growing up, my father. Um, I know I wanted to write that wrong. So uh, me being able to give that to my kids, uh, my time, my care, um, just, that's just, that's just a, a amazing, man. You know, I take being a father uh, um, very serious and um, just, just working with them and, and showing them that, you know, this is fun um, to, and, and also in, important to be uh, healthy, you know, just just uh, maximizing on their movements so that their growth can be uh, can be, you know, um, healthy, and that um, their foundation could be firm and and them being able to transition over into sports. So so their long term athletic development is just primed just right when they're able to get to high school and really take on the the world of of sports so yeah yeah i mean <clears throat> for me i mean a lot of what james just said i mean too i didn't i didn't meet my father until i was 22 years old until i was already a father so same thing there's definitely a level of motivation for me to kind of be there <clears throat> and so for my i got two sons so for both of them to be into what i do and to want to kind of be around daddy and and learn and do the same stuff they see me doing and other people I work with, you know, it makes me feel proud. I'm, I'm proud of them. It just makes, you know, I get all the feels when they do it. And, <laughs> you know, we, we even look at stuff, we look at James and his daughters and see, you know, see what they're doing. And, you know, we look up to them and other examples of just, you know, the same type of relationships. And I love it. I cherish that time with my boys and I hope that they're always into what I do because that time is probably the most fun I have. Um, Absolutely. on a consistent basis in the gym is in my when my kids can be with me when they're smiling and getting confidence and so you know I, I love that wouldn't trade it for the world well <clears throat> i want to wrap things up guys but i i appreciate you guys hopping on and doing this uh it was a lot of fun we had uh <clears throat> some good conversation uh some conversation that was much needed but also great to hear about what you guys are doing and um you know, all that fun stuff. And actually speaking about what you guys are doing, you know, just real quick, James, you know, moving forward in the 2022, I, I know you have a bunch of other athletes that you're working, that you're working with, uh, you know, what are you doing, uh, as you get ready for 2022? Uh, just prime on my, uh, the athletes I'm working with, uh, Tudor Magda, Connor Bass, uh, Melanza Hayes, um, re remote athletes, just, um, just looking to be, be a blessing to, to those that's coming to me for uh for their expertise and um and uh and my insight on the like, sport of CrossFit and and just looking to uh to help them be the best that they can be. You know, um I, I, I love I love what I'm doing and, and 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 I don't do this for the money and everything. It's 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 a position that the most high God put me in to to be able to be a blessing to others and and that's what I'm doing. And, and I'm just having fun doing it, man. I'm glad, you know, the the, uh, the sport starts next week and I get to watch Nick and his athletes and root for them. And then, you know, root for, you know, all the competitors that's out there just trying to do their best, man, while they, you know, put their push their bodies to the brink for the next three weeks. And then you got a week off and then you got to come back and then try to do these five workouts in three days. So it's going to be fun, man. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, opens nearly here, and you know the season gets started. And 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 for Olivia Nick, it, it'll be her first year dipping her toe into the the individual side. Just uh, talk about what you guys have coming up for twenty twenty two, and 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 some of your hopes. Yeah, so this is kind of the year that 
all through her teen career, we still were kind of trying to build towards this. We were hopeful we could get it done last year, like how James and Mal and uh, Matt and Emma were able to get done. And um, we came up short. We weren't, we didn't get it done, but, you know, we've used them as inspiration and just kind of chewed on it. And just like all competitors, you kind of, it leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth kind of, but, you know, you've used it for motivation and that's definitely part of our journey. So she had a good showing at Wadapalooza. She's just, she's coming such a long way physically. She's coming such a long way mentally and um, she's going for it this year and I'm going for it too for her. And so we're working hard we're not going to necessarily just worry about being ready for the games. I know that's definitely a thing, but you know, we're, we're competitive. So although the open's not the end of the world, we want to compete at a high level at every single level. Um, you know, so we're looking forward to the open next week. feels like it crept up on us somehow. Uh, quarterfinals. We'll want to, we'll want to know where we stand and then get into semifinals. You know, we're going to go for that top five spot. We want to be in Madison. So we're excited, but definitely going for it. Yeah, it'll be an exciting 2022 and hopefully we'll we'll all cross paths at some point somewhere down the line this year but um it was fun to have you guys on i appreciate you guys doing this and taking the time uh it was a lot of fun and appreciate it Dick. thanks for having us on appreciate it james appreciate you bro